Hi guys, welcome back to the Sports with Mono and Mono show. I'm here with my brother Steve, my partner in crime. Steve. Hi everybody, welcome back to our show. Yep. Lots going on. As always. <laughs> That's why we like talking sports. Yes we do. That's right. Now let's jump right into the NFL. And this segment of course is sponsored by Coriano Trucking Incorporated from Haverstraw, New York. And we thank them every week. Immeasurably. We do. Thanks, Guy. All right, so let's let's jump right into it. Where do we start? Your Cowboys or, or my Giants? No, or we'll start whatever. Thursday night. I actually got a couple requests from some of our audience. Talk, uh, curious to see what our thoughts were on the Dallas Cowboys. Um, you know, I, I had taken them, I bet, I think the spread was six and a half or something. Well, I don't, you know, I don't play the spread. Yeah. That's why I, I take a beating from one of our uh, loyal listeners, Kenny Backard, about who covers, who doesn't cover. I say, who wins and who doesn't win. That's my motif. Well, you know? to make money, you got to uh, factor in the spread. But the point is, the Cowboys get off to a 7 nothing start. They, they first offensive possession, they march down the field. I think it was a 17 play drive. They score, Bears get the ball back, then the Cowboys intercept the ball on the one-yard line, and it was pretty much good night, Gracie, after that. And you know what? You know what I've been thinking about? You know, the whole NFC East and the Eagles, I keep, you know, i got to jump off this bandwagon. I think they're going to beat the Giants, you know, to death tonight. But the Cowboys have had opportunity after opportunity to run away with this division, and they just can't seem to do it. But what's fu funny about the Cowboys is they actually, their offense was ranked number one coming into this game. Oh, how that's possible. Exactly, and their defense is ranked number 10. They have a plus 67 differential in points, meaning they're, they're up. So it's uncanny, number one. And number two, this is deepest into the season. It was one other team, like Bobby Lane's Detroit Lions or something. Oh, and back in the 60s? Uh, mid maybe 50s. even the 50s. Yeah, oh. mid-50s. Okay. Um, had a higher point differential, meaning, you know, they scored 70-something points. But the point is, it's not translating the wins. Jason Garrett, I would imagine the players have tuned them out. So I can't tell you if the Cowboys are going to snap out of this funk. Or continue the funk. It's a little late but, to snap out of it. But one way or the stuff. other, I think it's safe to say that Jason Garrett is gone. Will be gone a after the year. And I, uh, let's talk about that because this came up today. A lot of people have speculation, and I'm staying. I'm staying with this Lincoln Riley. I think Jerry Jones has to make a splash on something. He's not going to bring in an old recycled coach like a Wade Phillips or something like that. <laughs> What do you think about Lincoln Been there, Riley? Done that. Right. What do you think? I mean, that, I'm staying with Lincoln Riley. I think he's 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 coming to the Cowboys. Well, I don't know why Lincoln Riley would want to come to the Cowboys. He's probably making five million bucks as the Oklahoma head coach. He's going to make more in Dallas. Uh, okay, but he's <laughs> not going to have any influence, any say, nothing. He will be promised the moon, but at the end of the day, Jerry Jones will call the shots. Listen, he's a young, attractive coach. I can't. I can't tell you right now who the next coach of the Dallas Cowboys would be. Right. Would I be disappointed if it's Lincoln Riley? No, but I think a change is necessary. I don't think Jason Garrett's the worst coach. His career record with the Cowboys is, I'm going to, I just saw it. <clears throat> it's definitely, I want to say, 20 games over 500. Okay. Which is serviceable. But again, we're about winning Super Bowls, championships. Um, which they think, have not done. Yeah, so it's time which for a change. But. Enough on the Cowboys. Anybody's got any feedback, particularly Mr. Smith out there, fellow Cowboy fan. Yep. Any suggestions as to writing the ship, please, sports with mono and mono at gmail.com. So I wanted to segue to, which I thought was a, probably the most entertaining game of yesterday, was, was the Niners and the Saints. That was a great game. It was an awesome <laughs> game. And I, I, I think the Niners are for real. I mean... I, I really do. 46 points to the uh, the Saints, but you know what? They scored 48. <laughs> so, but I, I do. I think the Niners. I think the Niners are going to make some noise this year. I really do. 
And um, I, I'm a big fan of Jimmy Garoppolo. I think a, a lot of people... I'm warming to him. No, I, I, I think he's a, an efficient quarterback. As long as he stays healthy, I think San Francisco has a, has a, a good, decent quarterback. I think their defense is really good. Has a Mark Bavaro clone for a tight end, which well, doesn't that, hurt. That was you, some play, wasn't that was, it? And that's exactly who I thought of was Mark Bavaro, too. So for the audience, uh, you know, the Saints-Niners game, Kittle, um, I think it got him to overtime, right? Or, or kicked the game-winning field goal. It was late in the game, but George Kittle makes a catch and turns up the sideline and was just... You know, a, a got an extra 15 yards while somebody was grabbing his face mask. Right. I mean, so, it was unbelievable. It was a great play. It was Mark Bavaro esque. So, and the announcers didn't say that at all. <laughs> I was like, I was waiting for it, going, nothing, yeah. nothing, Joe Buck. You know? But on the Saints side, Drew Brees had a good game. He's been somewhat un Drew Brees like. Uh, I don't know if he's still the lingering hand injury that he had. It knocked him out for five, six weeks. But you'll hear from the Saints. But it was a big, big game. Niners maintain, yep. um, you know, their momentum. And then, you know, at night the Seattle Seahawks uh, playing the Rams. Mm -hmm. And you know, I actually had a good day yesterday. I had a lot of winners yesterday, but one of my losers was the Seahawks and the Rams. So Mr. Inconsistent Jared Goff played somewhat decent last night yes, and did. the Rams season is basically on the line. It was a must win for them and what do they do? They beat the Seattle Seahawks. Ooh, so. I don't I don't bet against them or Russell Wilson in big games. It's That's kind right. of my Nick Saban from a quarterback perspective, but yeah. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the best division in football right now, I think, with the best teams is, is San Francisco, Seattle. Obviously, the Rams are NFC uh, defending champs and obviously got out of the gate a little bit uh, too slow this year. But don't discount them. And they still have a chance at the wild card. And... Um, you but know. what's the other thing that, you know, of course now it's, it's the, you know, the Patriots. Everyone's waiting to... Right off the New England Patriots, and I'm not writing anybody off like that, you know. Well, you, you can't write them off, but to your point, yes, everybody's has been waiting for Father Time to finally catch up. Okay. So as Tom Brady descended down the mountain a, a little bit, I don't bet against this guy. I, I don't care. <laughs> of course that, not. That, that it's week fourteen. <laughs> And now they suffered, what, their third loss? And look, if this guy thought for one second he wasn't able to do this like he used to do it, then he would have stepped away last year. Well, he's not stepping away for the next six, seven, eight weeks, that's for sure. But, yep. um, you know, is there is there a, uh, you know, <laughs> are the Patriots not what they were a, a year ago? Maybe. I mean, they have receiver issues. They really do. They're having trouble scoring points to the level that they normally do. Defensively, I think... I like I, that kid, Nikhil Harry. I think he's going to be a player, but yeah. I think he's in Belichick's doghouse because he, you know, kind of, you know, s spent more time in the hot tub in training camp than <laughs> than yeah. Belichick would like, but... Uh, we'll say the Pats' home winning streak of 21 games comes to an end. Yeah. And... Um, you know, the fact is Baltimore keeps winning. So, you know, let's switch over to the Ravens and the Ravens and Bills. I know you were high on the Bills taking the Ravens down. I was all in on the Ravens. And no, actually, I wasn't on them taking them down. I thought that they would play them close, and they did. But, you know, I looked at the schedule, and the, the Bills, you know, they're 9-4. and four. They got a great record. But they really haven't beaten anybody. Their, their marquee game was Thanksgiving, beating the Cowboys. But... Yeah. You know, they, they're they going to have to fight to get into the playoffs. I mean, Pittsburgh's been on a roll, so I think they're going to... Pittsburgh's 8-5 and five now. <laughs> Pittsburgh wins in the desert, beats the Cardinals. And you got to really consider Mike Tomlin, of uh, Coach of the Year candidate. And I know there's other guys like Kyle Shanahan would probably be up there. But Mike Tomlin, I mean, Roethlisberger goes down bright and early, and... Uh, they struggle early. They lose Antonio Brown. Schuster Smith's not doing anything. James Connor's not there. James Connor's been pretty banged up all year. Yep. But you know what? They made that trade for Minka Fitzpatrick, who's a Jersey kid, played at St. Peter's 
High School, uh -huh. went to Alabama. We saw him play. And yeah. this kid is, is the real deal. I mean, he's a team leader out there. So he, he solidified Pittsburgh's secondary. And yep. is it a coincidence once they made that trade that they've been playing pretty good football? <clears throat> so never discount the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're in the hunt. Yep. And um, outside of that, you know, our local Jet fans were in action yesterday. A oh, horrible game to watch. It was an watch. awful game. You know, horrible game to watch. But we had to watch it, and we do watch it because we want our East Coast uh, audience That's to right. say, you know, wait a minute. You a know, thrilling New York Jets victory over a tough, tough Miami Dolphins. Right, and two weeks ago they were throwing Sam Donald under the bus, the worst quarterback ever. What a bust, and now all of a sudden, you know, he's, he's maturing. It's crazy, you right. know. I like what Adam Gase is doing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Three weeks ago, they were flying a banner uh, over yeah, Manhattan. You exactly. Know. It's so, crazy. You know, the Jets, listen, you know, the more they win, the lower they drop in the draft. And, uh, yeah. you, you know, I think Gase has saved his job. He'll be back next year. But we'll see what the Jets do. I'm sure they're going to be um, having a lot of players uh, leave that team. And look, the Giants, they, you know, they're, they're just as awful. I mean, they're awful, but I'm, I'm sticking with Jones. It's crazy that, you know... If Manning comes home tonight and, and, and plays this game and, and, and beats the Eagles, which I don't think is going to happen, you know, you're going to get the, all the naysayers saying, you know, we, we pulled them too early, you know, Jones wasn't ready and so forth. But they're a terrible team. And Shermer's going to have to pay the price for this. We're and, going to see. I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards Pat Shermer. It depends, obviously, on the <clears> last... Uh, three, four games of the year. And I would take Ron Rivera tomorrow over Pat Shermer, if well, that's what they're thinking. Uh, I don't know what they're thinking. So. Obviously, he's going to be a candidate. Dave Gettleman connection from the Carolina Panthers. Absolutely. I think but, that's almost going to happen. But again, sure. Eli Manning is, is playing tonight, and you know what? It's going to be his last Monday night football game, one way or the other. And I wanted to bring this... I hope this, he does well. Right, you know, but I, I... hope he does well. This conversation came up today with Eli Manning, and I've defended him. He's got two Super Bowls, and... But everyone goes, Hall of Fame? He's not a Hall of Fame quarterback. I go, well, he's got two Super Bowls. His record is 500 over the course of his career, but he's had some crappy teams. So, you know, and I always throw... I looked up Dan Fouts's, uh career and he threw for a lot of yards and so forth but his records are only a couple of games over 500 too and he had a pretty good team you know be rest assured Eli Manning is going to the Hall of Fame I don't think he's going on the first ballot no though. he's not no. a first ballot right no question but okay he will be in the Hall of Fame no question so Eli plays tonight uh, what do you think of tonight's game, Eagles, Giants? I think the Eagles are going to rout them tonight, actually. I think the Giants have packed it in. and uh, The point spread is nine and a half. It's a lot. I don't care what the Eli, point spread Eli is. Eli showing up tonight. Um, if i got to make a prediction, I, I, I think I'll go with the Eagles as well yeah. to cover. Okay. They're just because they have something to play for. All right. Because the Dallas Cowboys want to hand them the division. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> of course. So that, that's pretty much it in the NFL. Yep. I don't think there were any uh, major drug suspensions or yep. anything off the field. But I will sense. say this, one more thing with the NFL. That some of this um, officiating, and I'm not, <laughs> it, it's just bizarre. Some of it is just so ridiculous, right? And I don't even know what to make of it. I, you know, sometimes I just, I, I say, wait a minute. They're giving the refs the ability to make these calls, but they're not giving them the ability to overturn them. It, it's kind of crazy. It's nuts. I'm not. And to see Bla Brian Flores and, and Bill Belichick went crazy yesterday on some of these. And so did Sean Payton. Sean right. Payton goes crazy. He, well, he thinks Payton the refs has, have it in Sean for him Payton anyway. Sean has a right to think the refs. Right. He's, he's, <laughs> he's been there before, but. But before we do close the NFL, it was actually before we just went on the air, I, I was checking. And um, I see something's brewing about the New England Patriots again and quote-unquote Spygate. Apparently there's an incident the NFL is looking at that oh, during, really? during the Bengals-Browns game, the Patriots had a, a videographer uh, taking pictures. Uh, they, they needed a videographer to, well, to, to scope well, the Bengals? No, nah, well, apparently... <laughs> The, the camera was focused exclusively on the Bengals coaching staff uh, trying 
this, that, and the other thing. And so security called the kid in, and my only point is this could be something breaking. I don't know the extent of it, but again, with the Patriots' history, uh, it's just gonna it's gonna get the chorus going. Uh, you know, cheater, cheater, cheaters again. I so put no credence. We will in this. wait to see what happens with this. It could be nothing, or it could actually be something. Okay, so we shall see. All right, great. So we we covered the NFL, and, and of course we'll cover them next week as well. <laughs> so let's go on to. Uh, it was a great weekend for any football fans, yeah. especially our college championship Contingent. Saturday. Oh, I love right? it. I love Getting it. Me starts on a Friday night. No doubt. And bam. All day Saturday. Right. Utah took a powder on Friday night. I got to tell you, I was a little surprised. I, I, I figured because Utah had something to play for, whether they were going to get that four slot, a lot of things had to happen. But number <laughs> one is you got to take like care of Like a plane crash win. had to happen. You know? But Oregon, to their credit, they, they, they showed up, and uh, Oregon took it to Utah, and Utah... So they got knocked out. They so, got knocked uh, out. And then it comes, you know, Oklahoma and... That was a great game. So Oklahoma Baylor back and forth. Uh, you know, I get Baylor credit. Baylor's quarterback gets knocked out early in the game. They put in their their second stringer. Kind of looks ineffective, and then they even went down to the third uh, QB, who I think is a freshman. Yep. And he came in through a big touchdown pass, and and Baylor, you know, they they. They well, hung in there, but they weren't. They weren't going to win that. But at game. the end of the day, uh, Oklahoma wins in uh, overtime, and Oklahoma has one loss. So then you wait to see what happened with LSU and Georgia, and I tell you, LSU really stuck it to them. And I got to tell you, because like I said, we were talking about it whether it was going to be Georgia or whether it was going to be Oklahoma. And I said, if Georgia shows up and plays a competitive game against LSU, which they did not, well, they had to win. The only way they were getting in is they had to beat LSU. Okay. All right, so we're dismissing the Oklahoma-Kansas State loss kind of thing, which... Mm-hmm. But I think it's it's the right thing. But, we, you know, Steve and I were just talking about this before uh, the show. You know, the number one team was Ohio State, and, you know, I just... I, I don't get the, the methodology of these guys picking the, the number one seed. But, you know, why should a number one team drop down to number two because of a performance of the number two team. I, I don't know. I'm a little... What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of fluid now that they have this committee. It's not the BCS where the freaking computer was doing it. Now you actually have, um, you know, quote-unquote human beings in a, in a room. Oh, right, well, clue but, me in but, on what the process no, is. but listen, I, I would think at the end of the day... These guys can't watch as much football as, as we do or the average <laughs> fan does. So let's be real, number one. They don't see every team. They don't watch five, six games of every team that they're looking at. Well, they, this eye test, you know, g- give me a break. All right. But I, I got to say. I get it. In this particular instance, LSU and Ohio State were kind of flip-flopping the last couple of weeks, number one, number you know, two, so on and so forth. So Ohio State... You can say they struggled early, and then you know they. But they haven't they struggled up as in of the late. Second half, mm-hmm. and the, you know they they beat Wisconsin by ten, but LSU okay. really hammered. And Georgia. I'm going to give you this because I'll tip so my I hat. I don't have a problem seeding them number one. But you brought this up weeks ago, and I told you I was on the fence with Joe Burrow all year, but. He won the Heisman Trophy on Saturday. Oh, he did? It's official? <laughs> well, in my book. <laughs> oh, okay. He's got my book. Well, in my he, vote. He's been know. in my vote for... Uh, and I, I'll weeks. give you that. I, I, I will tip my hat to that. So, you know, on the other side, so, you know, now that Oklahoma claim number four, we talked LSU number one, LSU versus Oklahoma. I'm going right now. I don't care what the spread is. I'm taking LSU all the way here. I think it's... Pretty safe. Yeah, there. I mean, I'm not, uh, you know, <laughs> touting myself here. I mean, and I'm not going by the point spreads. I'm saying LSU will win, but I think Ohio State. I don't know if they played a team so of the Cle- caliber well, of LSU. Well, so, Cle- so. Well, Cle- I mean, Clemson. I'm Clemson sorry. versus Ohio State. Yeah. And now, you know, Clemson finishes the third seed. Is there a debate? I don't think Clemson cares one way or the other. But Clemson looked fantastic against All year. Virginia. All year. Now, they peak. When they peak, they peak. And you got to watch out for Clemson. I'm telling you, I love Clemson over Ohio State now all the way here. 
And the last time these two teams played was maybe about three years ago. Urban Meyer obviously coaching Ohio State. And I tell you what, Clemson just absolutely schooled Ohio State. And I tell you what, the formula is the same. The athletes, the names may change, but the athletes are still running four threes and, and benching uh, this, that, and the other thing. Oh, no question. I love about Clemson it. over Ohio State. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll preview that, but, you know. Let's fast forward then. Let's, let, let's, you know, hypothetically say, you know, we got the matchup everyone's looking for. It's certainly the, the matchup I'm looking for. LSU, LSU Clemson, Clemson right? Sure. And we'll talk about that. I need some time to do some homework because that that's going to be a great game. You I, got the I, two best teams. You better believe it. And uh, I can't give you an answer right now. I think the two, I think they're the, the most, the two most <clears throat> complete superior, teams, superior athletic teams too. Huh. So you know, Clemson has great wide receivers, but LSU has got some really good defensive backs. Man. Yeah. Um, so. Del Pitt's you know, a player. He's a player. And then bowl season is upon us. We, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about bowl matchups that'll start playing in a couple weeks for the, uh, you know. Right, the Subway, you know, ham and cheese bowl. Right, the pool and weed eater bowl, the blue bonnet bowl, <laughs> and the, uh, you know. <laughs> the Windex bowl. Yeah, of course. <laughs> we'll, we'll get on to that. But. So while we're talking college football, you did mention my boy Joe Burrow. So the other finalists were announced. So it's Justin Justin Fields from Ohio State, right? Jalen Hurts from Oklahoma, right? And Chase Young from Ohio State. I think I think Jonathan Taylor got snubbed with the he, Chase he Chase did. Young thing. He did. So um, we were also looking at Chase Young as a defensive player being invited to New York. Turns out he is now the fourth defensive player in Heisman history to. Come to New York. At least so in the past speak. 30 years. I mean, I, I threw so some names For out. our audience, guys, remember Steve Entman from the University of Washington in 1991. Real beast. Number one pick of the Colts, I think. He right? was a yeah. beast. But he again, was a beast, he, he didn't have a real good career. No. Nope. NFL career. He didn't really translate. So then the other guy. It's one of our all-time favorites on Sports with Mono and Mono. Of course, is Warren Sapp from the Miami wah, wah, wah. <laughs> in 1994. I got to tell you. I Warren just, Sapp, first, first ballot Hall of Famer. I just had this conversation with what, one of our listeners, Troy, today, and I said, I don't get it. Joe Klecko's not in, but Warren Sapp is, and Howie Long's in, and, you know... I think, I'm that's, I think this is two shows in a row we referenced Joe Klecko. Exactly, but I've been on this bandwagon forever. So, <laughs> But Warren Sapp and Howie Long in the Hall of Fame, it's not Bob Lilly. It's its unbelievable to me. Right. Unbelievable to me. Oh, well, they had three good years. I go, yeah, well, Reggie White had 14 good years, and <laughs> Bruce Smith had 12 good years. Please Where every put, single week they were dominant in their sport. Was, I would appreciate it, Troy, if you would not put Warren Sapp in the same sentence <laughs> with Bob Lilly. <laughs> if I didn't like Troy so much, I, I would have said Randy that. Randy White. <laughs> okay. Please. No. Merlin Olsen, please. I brought that up and he looked at me, you know, who's Merlin Olsen? I said, okay, let's move on. <laughs> so then the, and the other defensive guy was uh, Ndamukin Sue. For the Nebraska Cornhuskers, right. so I think it's it's a foregone conclusion. Joe Burrow. So listen, Joe Burrow threw forty eight touchdown passes in the SEC, yeah. which is a conference record. Yeah, and he threw for four thousand seven hundred fifteen yards. I, I'm sold on him. And you don't have to sell and, me. And, and his completion percentage was off the charts. I don't need the air conditioning in the house, uh, central air. I'm, I'm, I'm buying it anyway. But I'm not touting Joe Burrow as the next Joe Montana. I don't know if he translates to the NFL Who knows, yet. but this is college But right I tell now. you what, this kid has had a great year, and, he's, he, and he's got you know potentially two more games. Alright, so I, I, I think, like I said, I think Jonathan Taylor got snubbed, but I think Jalen Hurts had a great year. I think he comes in second. You know? Now, I'm going to go uh, Justin Fields second. I think Hurts will come in third and Young will be fourth. Okay. That's my guess. We'll see. So then the other news in college football for our uh, local contingent is, uh, you know, we, we had talked about negotiations seem to have broken down between Chiano 
Greg Schiano and Rutgers University. But we did say it wasn't a done deal. No. It's the negotiation thing. And yeah. they came around. And listen, I got to ask you your opinion on this because everyone talks, wow, what a great job he did, you know, and the first time. And I said, that's great. But he wasn't in the Big Ten back then. This is a whole new ball game. So he's got to change his philosophy, you know. And he, he's keeping Nunzio from Bergen Catholic. They need these Jersey kids to be competitive. Yeah. But we've always talked about this. If you're a top prospect in Bergen County and you got Penn State and LSU and Alabama calling, are you going to Rutgers? Well, I mean, to your point, you know, we're St. Joe's regional guys. I just uh, read a couple days ago that uh, Tari or Tari, R-A-I-T-E-R-A-I Powell, uh, was running back on St. Joe's, and uh, he committed to uh, Rutgers. And uh, guess what? He decommitted to Rutgers. To, to Rye Powell is his name. Okay, but he wasn't the best running back in the. No, Audric no. was. No, you know. absolutely. But my point is, so Shiano just shows up. Okay, to your point, it's the Big Ten, and and absolutely. I don't know if Rutgers belongs in the Big Ten. It's a money play. There's no turning back. They've been there now. and They've been the doormat since they I got will, in. There. I will say this. Shiano did recruit well when he was at Rutgers. No question. He brings in guys from Florida. He'll, he'll go anywhere to get them. Now, again, you know, we're talking about <laughs> first-class citizens, uh, quote-unquote, but he's going to have to fill the cupboard up with athletic Yep. Guys. So yep. we'll see how it plays out. I'm happy Nunzio uh, was kept. I think he might be, you know, you know, one or two of the leftovers. I'm sure Shiano's going to bring in. Uh, His guys. We it, know that. Well, yeah. I'm yeah. not sure who they are. But, but I think he realizes that Campanelli from Bergen and, you yeah. know. He's got he's he to have these guys. Pipeline. He's got to have the pipeline, and there's no better pipeline than Nunzio. And people. we'll know in two, you know, two seasons whether or not these kids are staying home or not. But right. I thought it was a kind of, I, 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 you know, I wasn't a big fan. I would have liked to have had a whole yeah. new change. So he gets eight million. He gets an eight-year deal, four million a year. Any private plane. If uh, it's available, quote unquote. If and a, it's and not a, available. And a five thousand uh, dollar first class all the way. Five thousand uh, dollar wardrobe allowance. Right. Like, so these were part of the negotiations oh, that God. they were doing. <laughs> so, really. <laughs> but anyway, Rutgers has their coach in place, and you know, outside of Shiano, I, I really can't think of a name that probably would be the best fit. You know. So you know. And, and also what I was hearing was when these negotiations broke down, the, the Rutgers, uh, you know, administration and Hobbs and the president, and they really got some, some like ferocious feedback saying, you you got to hire this guy. And, and they caved. Oh, so they're willing to pay him. They caved, and, and, and Shiano came, came off a couple of his points, too. But that's what negotiation's about. Yeah. But the bottom okay. line is he's in place, and we'll see where some of the top talent starts forming. Well, we'll talk about how far Rutgers is from playing in the national championship game. We'll, we'll talk about that's this right. uh, you know, two years from now. Yep. Whatever. So that pretty much co covers our football segment. And, and high school, um, you know, we talked about Ramapa, we talked about St. Peter's winning it, but DePaul was in action. They won. This past weekend. And they won. I was actually going to save a shout out because uh, I coached with Al uh, in my hometown. Al Natoli is the tight ends coach on DePaul. Congratulations also, to yeah, them. Also, yep. um, Nick Campanelli, uh, Nunzio's brother, is uh, I think the quarterback's coach at DePaul. So congratulations to Paul Spartans in a real thriller. They they beat made or die down at Rutgers. Yep. Great uh, game. Two points, Excellent. 27 25. Yep. So my shout out is to Al Natoli and to Paul and congratulations. Yep. All right, so let's move on. Listen, we'll, we're reluctant to do it, but we got to talk about the NBA. And this, of course, is sponsored by Lynch Motors of Manchester, Connecticut, who's been a loyal sponsor of our show. The next fire, David Fisdale. Okay, oh, really? now on to... <laughs> <laughs> okay, on to now. Uh, Anthony Davis and LeBron James. Well, I meant now on to Major League Baseball. <laughs> uh, 
I, I don't even know what to say. I mean, it was the right thing to do, but <laughs> why Mills didn't get canned is, is something. That is one of the mysteries of the world. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I, I, I don't know what he's got on Dolan, but it, it, it's got to be something. And I got to tell you, very listen, salacious. We, we talked about this, and I actually watched like 10 minutes of the Knicks game, which is watching an NBA game, in particular the Knicks, it's boring as hell. It's it's unbelievable. Uh, it's un, it's almost <laughs> unwatchable. The regular season in the <laughs> NBA, unless you're seeing these marquee guys and you want to see like you know Doncic and all these other guys sure. play. James, you know he's great, still great. I mean Anthony Davis threw down fifty the other night. Wow. I mean the Lakers again. Lakers I think uh, at this point, I think we broadcast last week. They were seventeen and two. They're probably what. 22 and well, let me see what they do against the Clippers. You yeah, know? No, let me I'm, let, I'm let me saying. see what they do against the Clippers. No, but back to our New York Knicks. So, so Coach Fisdale, after a couple thirty-point lopsided <laughs> ass whoopings, <laughs> but the point is, listen, dear boy, Steve Mills, I, I just don't get it. I just don't get how this guy is in power. And, he must be. He must be and, Jim and, Dolan's brother-in-law. And, and or he something. can say, you know, Coach Fisdale, you know. You're the one who got the players, Scott Perry, what have you. So Julius Randle's not the worst player I've ever seen. But did I... Is he worth 20 or $18 no, million yeah, dollars a year? That. I mean, the money's crazy. <laughs> Come on. But if I remember correctly, is Julius Randle like, known for his three-point shooting coming up and just well, <laughs> chucking three-pointers? Not that I'm aware one-on-one of. one-on-one basketball. Yeah. And you know why Julius Randle can do that? Because he plays for the New York Knicks. That's right. why Julius Randle can do it. And I'm not knocking him, but this is not going <laughs> to get fixed until, I don't know, I'm probably in a wheelchair. Right. But somebody had a very funny line. They said, Fisdale looked like Mr. Potato Head. Oh, go, absolutely. <laughs> Brilliant, I said. Mr. Potato Head with Don Rickles' voice in Toy Story? <laughs> that Mr. Potato Head? Oh, very good. <laughs> Your hockey puck. <laughs> right, with his Morty Seinfeld glasses. <laughs> anyway, there's not a hell of a lot to talk about no, with the NBA. No, James it's very Harden, early. Barely James Harden dunked the ball, and then they said he didn't. And right. He, and they've just been upset all week, and then the Rockets were just denied. And uh, everybody fouls them. And, nobody, right. you know. and Melo is playing for the Portland Trailblazers. Right. And Russell and, Westbrook makes $40 million right. a year doing nothing. Right. You and, know. And, and Mello, Crazy. Melo didn't like uh, CP3 in Houston. <laughs> and and that's, that's the NBA. That's it. So, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. So let's get to uh, let's get to Major League Baseball, some hot stove stuff. Yep. So uh, actually it was announced today, uh, Mr. Strasburg of the Washington Nationals, and I think the psychological profile on him is he's a real good guy. He's a he's a quiet guy. He like he doesn't like change. I love that he stayed home. Totally. I think it's great. And he just broke the bank and, and gets the highest contract ever for a pitcher. Seven years, two forty five. But he is susceptible to injuries yes, every but, year. But right. even when he first came up, remember he was the number one draft choice yeah. and the whole thing was he was going to be the next Cy Young, yes. Sandy Koufax, whatever. He's had a real good career, though. He, had, you know, he hasn't disappointed outside of injuries. And he's got a World Series ring, yeah. and he earned it. So and an MVP uh, World Series. So what, where do you think that leaves the the Garrett Cole thing? I mean, the Yankees are going to make I an think, offer. Does I, this guy think, want to stay in California, or does he want to come to New York? Well, I think they, if you want Garrett Cole, it's seven years. <laughs> Two hundred forty-five million. Well, it so, was before Strasburg so now signed, it's so now it's two hundred and fifty million. Yeah, if want Gary that's Cole. right. It's exactly what's going to happen. So, but you know what? Let me let me just put this out there. Okay, that's great. Yankees will offer seven years, two hundred and seventy-five million. The Angels will give him three hundred million. Does he stay home? What, what's your thought on? No, my my thought is the uh, the <clears throat> Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, which I can't even. Stand saying that. Right? We'll stick with the California Angels. It's always yeah. the California Angels. Right. Um, I think Artie Moreno, the owner of the Angels, is, is going to break the bank for Garrett Cole. I'd see Garrett Cole's California kid. He, again, we've talked about Garrett Cole. He was an original draft choice of the Yankees that can never come to terms. 
and and they they try to get him again from Pittsburgh didn't work out. He's 29 now. Do I advocate giving a seven year contract nearly to a pitcher? To I a don't. Pitcher? But you know what? If he can bring a championship in one or two years or the third year, right? That's what they're paying for. And you know what? We've talked about. Are we going to go to the game? Are, are we going to sign up for season tickets? Are we going to buy foam fingers at the game? Are we buying a nine dollar hot dog? A nine dollar hot dog no. and forty three dollar beers? No. no, it's not happening. And sixty dollar parking, and mm -hmm. it's just not going to happen. So you know what? I don't care if the Yankees give him a billion dollars. Okay, I want championships. That's what. We sign up for. I think he could be, you made a good point, Steve. I think he could bring a championship, you know, within two years if he stays healthy. He's that kind of quality pitcher. He's 29. Once you get to 31, 32, you get to start, you know, the wheels start getting, the lug nuts start coming loose and so but, forth. But I but, think the Yankees really need to consider giving him a, a, a very high offer just because of the last couple of years they sat out the pitching market. Cashman stayed Pat at, at the All-Star break. And I'm not breaking his chops here as a Monday morning quarterback. They knew Severino was, was coming back in September. They weren't willing to offer up, you know, at the time. I don't have a, a problem with Cashman. I, his, I'm a big uh, Brian Cashman fan. Right I think yeah. Brian Cashman is awesome. And people will say, well, yeah, but they haven't won a title in 10 years. Well, he put the, <laughs> he put the players on the field. They just didn't hit. I mean, I don't know. Go kiss his fingers, because uh, he's got a lot of rings on those fingers. I agreed. And I think Brian Cashman's an astute, talent guy, and, and, and knows. And listen, as a general manager, you swing and miss. It's no different than hitting a baseball. Of course. Come on, in any right. sport. So. You win it, you're a hero. You, 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 you botch the pick or the signing. And yeah. So I, I, I think, uh, you know, if I have to guess... I would love to see Garrett Cole as a Yankee, but I, I think the Angels are going to sign. I do too. Just because uh, you know Madden's now the manager, they got Trout, and the years are, you know, they're starting to catch up on Trout. I mean, he's he's probably this going into. Well, year the Mickey maybe. Mouse fans are getting a little restless out there. They they've never won anything. Never. No, that's true. And if this guy's got that kind of money, the Yanks are going to set the bar, and the Angels are going to pay him twenty right. million more. Right. So, so they they we'll they've see. already proven it with uh, Mr. Pujols. Right. So on the other side, uh, I thought a hot news for our local Met fans is is the transfer of power about to train. The Wilpons have finally said, "Give me." <clears throat> X amount, what are they probably going to sell it for a couple billion or something? Right, but it doesn't fully transition till you know, 2025 or some crazy thing. No, but I think it's a couple. I, 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 can, I don't see the Mets being big spenders this year, but once this Steve Cohen guy, Bobby Axelrod, <laughs> <Williams>. <laughs> you beat me to it. <laughs> that was so easy, it was ridiculous. But I think it's good news for Met fans. I think this guy, listen, this guy is a Met fan, number one. His okay. father is a Met fan. His family are Met fans. They kind of sound like the Monahans. I okay, say. I was just going to say, if you and I had $500 billion in the bank and we bought the Yankees, were yeah. we going to win a championship? Oh, well, well the point <laughs> is, they're going to open the checkbook with this guy because this guy is apparently worth $16 billion, something like that. Something he's, worth, he's worth mega bucks. So no the question. point is, I think that's good news for Met fans that they're going to start acting like their counterparts, the New York Yankees and the right. Los Angeles Dodgers and the Red Sox and, you know, and, and, and flex their their finances because they they. Well, can't. he's a minority owner already, right? So... And, and, you know, Zach Wheeler just got a hundred and some odd million dollars from the Phillies, which yeah. we knew that was going to happen, right? A mediocre pitcher's worth a hundred sure. million. give me a pitcher with arm trouble. And Strasburg and Cole, they, these are three hundred million dollar guys. So, I don't know. We'll see. I, I don't see it making an immediate impact in, in, in the Mets. No, it's not. I, yeah. I mean, we're yeah. talking a couple of years out, but I think the point is that the Met fans see the light now that, that Wilpons are, are finally... Gonna, and they've owned the team for a long time. Let's I know, but it. they haven't been cheap. I mean... Yeah, they have. Really? They've gone off a couple times. The point was with... Uh, when cheap? They, yeah. 
Outside of when they tried, when they're still paying Bobby Bonilla. They did the Brett <laughs> Saberhagen, Vince Coleman trifecta. Oh, now you're going back. You know, going back twenty. My years point now, is you know. they they they've done it in the past. It's very infrequent. But when I say cheap, yeah, I, I think cheap at the Mets. Really, paying uh, Jed Lowry twenty million dollars was uh, <laughs> cheap. <laughs> Whatever, I, I, I'm just joking. Uh, listen, that, but... sports with mono and mono at gmail.com. I know oh. there's Met fans out there. Oh, please, please all you please folks from Queens. Please back me up on, on the cheap uh, all right. um, okay. <laughs> comment. No, we'll see how, you know, spending money, see if that brings you a championship. Right. So then um, also today, yes, we talked about the Hall of Fame about, what, three, three or four shows ago now. We did. And... Um, we both signed off on these two that were, were officially elected today. Certainly Marvin Miller we signed off yeah. on. Yeah, and Marvin Miller, I think, finally, that, you know, unfortunately. That's why Zach Wheeler's getting $100 million right. dollars, and thanks to Marvin Miller. Right. Yeah. Marvin Miller, unfortunately, passed away. Uh, guy, he's probably dead 10 years, I would think, at least. Right. And uh, congratulations to him and his family. It's well-deserved. Again, it, to your point, Zach Wheeler's not making, you know, what Zach Greer was making without Marvin Miller. You bet. And, you know, finally Ted Simmons uh, finally gets in. He got the 75% of the vote. And Ted Simmons we talked about. We were both kind of on the fence with that. He, You know, I'm not sure. He wasn't a sure fires. If Harold Baines gets in, Ted no, Simmons gets in. I, right? I, I'm not saying he's surefire, but for the amount of time that he's waited... Yeah, I think we both... No, he was a solid player, but Hall of feel, Famer? Yeah, I think we both feel Ted Simmons as a catcher in his prime. Switch hitting catcher, right? Yeah. And he had a good, very good career average and, and, and yep. listen, <laughs> Hall of Famer. So congratulations to those two. And uh, Oh, Yankee fans are going crazy. What, Thurman Munson doesn't get in, but Ted Simmons gets Don in? Mattingly, I go, look at the numbers. Don Mattingly, But Thurman. look at the numbers. Yeah. You know, yeah. Look at the numbers. Uh, Dwight yeah. Evans actually came in third. Oh, he did not get in. He didn't, but oh. Dwight may, you know, he's trending. So uh, we'll see. All right. Uh, that, you know what? Vet, Dwight actually could fall under the veterans at some point. Now. I know. That's kind of sad. He, he belongs. If Harold Baines got in before Dwight Evans, this is an injustice in the voting right? thing. So anyway, so we covered baseball pretty good. And, um, you know, our last segment is sponsored by Filippi's Bakery of Monticello, New York, of course. Right. And... Um, so let's talk about, before we sign off, Steve, notable passings. It's one of our one of our topics that we like to recognize, sports figures and so forth. And sure. I'll let you take it, you know. Well, well, you know, we talked about the Heisman Trophy earlier in the show. We did. So uh, the club has, has lost one of their, their members, lifetime uh, member. Yep. Pat Sullivan for... Our older audience, you know, of our generation definitely would know who that is. Pat Sullivan was an Auburn quarterback, and he won the Heisman Trophy in 1971. Yep. Pat didn't really translate to the NFL, but, nope. you know, that's, that's okay. He's still Pat Sullivan, Heisman Trophy <coughs> winner in 1971. Hey, either did Werfel or Palmer, well, you know, all absolutely. these other guys. Like Andre then. Ware. Of course. <laughs> we get it. We get it. David Klingler. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. We could, do, we could do a show on that. But uh, no, you know, Pat Sullivan was first when that was around the time I started to really recognize what was going on. I was still a young kid, yeah. but that's when, you know, two years before Capaletti and so forth, yeah. and it was now the Heisman is kind of the marquee thing so, for college so, football. Yeah, so we looked up the guy that won it the year before. It was, was a name in the NFL that we grew up looking at. James Plunkett. James Plunkett from Stanford University. Yep. Drafted by the New England Patriots. Super Bowl winning quarterback. Mm -hmm. the, not for the Patriots. He took his lumps with the Patriots and... He, Jim Plunkett was always a great story. That absolutely, and you know the fact that he had the success with the Raiders at a later age in his career was, it was awesome. Great, it was awesome. And he struggled. He was very injury prone, and yep. parents were blind, etc. 
But uh, and then sandwiched between uh, Plunkett was Pat Sullivan and Johnny Rogers in 1972. That's right, Nebraska Tornado. And we were talking about you know I actually was we were thinking about Steve Spurrier won the Heisman Trophy and it was 1966. That's right for the University of Florida Gators. That's right, and it was great you know so. Yes, and then again the Heisman Trophies this weekend and. You know, I think you can ring ring the bell for Joe Burrow, and I think it's absolutely well deserved. I, I agree. I don't even think it's gonna. It, it's I gonna, agree. Not unanimous, but no, it's it, gonna be unanimous. It's, it's gonna be a, a pretty high vote. <laughs> you bet. So uh, also for our uh, movie fans, Ron Liebman. Remember him, actor? Mm, he's in a thousand movies. You know. right. I would I would think people would remember him. Uh, probably Norma Ray. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason I bring that up, Sally Field won an Oscar, but uh, he was the union activist. Yes, he was. So he had a he had a prominent role. Career Hollywood career. actor. Oh, no my question. God. He's been in a thousand Absolutely. TV series Absolutely. and, and uh, so on and so forth. Yep. And he was actually married, I think, to Jessica Walter, who was, uh, you know. Play Misty play for Misty me. Play Misty for me. <laughs> okay. For our Clint fans. <laughs> right, in about 800 Columbo episodes. <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. Right. <laughs> right, and she got caught every time. Exactly. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that that's pretty much it, what we wanted to cover for this week. Good. Um so, look, I, I look forward to talking about the NFL and the college football and everything going forward, and we'll keep an eye on our Fisdale list Knicks and so forth. But, Mike uh, Miller, interim coach. Yeah. Well, I can find a real, real I, coach. I know it's not the Mike Miller that I know, but mm -hmm. anyway. But listen, thanks for joining us, everybody. And like Steve said, if you got some comments and so forth, which a lot of people have been doing, Sending us, you know, an email at sportswithmonoandmono at gmail.com. And feel free to chime in on YouTube and SoundCloud. Yep. We love Appreciate it. Appreciate the thumbs up and the following. And it just helps us build the audience. Yep. And we can't thank you enough for taking the time to listen to our show. And we will catch up to you uh, next week. We certainly will. And enjoy uh, this week's festivities. All right. Two weeks from Christmas. You got it. Thanks, Steve. All right. Good night. Bye. Thank you.